90s were not a very big decade for Christmas songs. Gee, I wonder why. After all, we're talking about a decade that happened after the 50s. Other than the traditional hymns and carols that are older than dirt, the overwhelming majority of the big, overplayed classic Christmas songs were written in the time period spanning from about the Great Depression to just after the Eisenhower administration. And since then, our culture has been pretty reluctant to add any new tracks to the infinite holiday playlist. But it hasn't been for lack of trying. It's just that for some reason, it's really, really hard for a new song to get accepted into the classic Christmas canon. So have you ever seen one of those charts that like lists the most popular Christmas songs by decade of release where it just falls off a cliff after the 50s? Apparently radio programmers have just been locked into the same old unvarying pattern of recreating the childhoods of baby boomers for the last 60 years and for the foreseeable future. Other styles of music are allowed to evolve. Christmas songs? Not so much. The average person probably wouldn't recognize the majority of the jazz age standards from the Great American Songbook unless they're either from famous musicals or they're Christmas songs. Or if they're Christmas songs from famous musicals, I guess. Or if they're from famous musicals but get used as Christmas songs despite having jack all to do with Christmas. You might ask yourself, why is that? Why is Christmas so concerned with living in the past? And yes, I realize the irony of putting this question out there when I make videos that are exclusively about music from 20 plus years ago. Don't break that trigger finger too hard trying to shoot the messenger. Christmas is about a lot of things, but the number one thing it seems to be about is preserving certain traditions. What you are explicitly celebrating is things not changing, which makes nostalgia an absolutely vital component to the enjoyment of Christmas music. And that's why when you hear a new or even unfamiliar Christmas song, your mind almost rejects it out of hand, because it hasn't earned its place yet. Christmas songs are for reminding us that even though another year has passed us by, the world is looking scarier and less recognizable by the day, at least there are still a few constants. You can always rely on being unwillingly subjected to 8 billion plays of Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas year in and year out. Isn't there something a little comforting about that, you old Scrooge? And although it is nigh impossible for a new song to enter the canon, there were a few in the 90s that were at least a bit memorable for those who lived through them. One more can I do? Oh, baby, all I want for yes, this song. Written by Mariah Carey and Walter Afanasyev and released in 1994 on her Christmas album, Merry Christmas. If there is only one original Christmas song from the 90s that seems destined to go down as a perennial holiday classic, this is the one. Which is funny because I don't remember it being that big of a hit at the time. I definitely heard it. Mariah was the single biggest star of the 90s and anything she released was essentially mandatory listening. But at the time, I imagine it came off like a bit of a too easy novelty coming from her. Like, yes, of course she would conquer Christmas too. She was an unstoppable commercial force on every level. A hit Christmas song was just another feather in her ridiculously dominant cap. If you were to ask me to name, say, the top 25 or so most popular Mariah songs from this decade, I don't even know if this would get in. But apparently this one has the most staying power. That would explain how it keeps shooting up the charts again year after year to the tune of 4 million sold to date, and in all likelihood will continue to reign supreme. I think the song is... fine. Mostly it's just good because of her vocal performance. Have you ever heard anybody else's version of the song? Ugh. And I do like that it's one of those happy sounding songs that turns out to be pretty sad and pathetic when you actually listen to the lyrics. Let's be clear, Mariah as a person is not believable doing this insecure please, please like me back shtick. But that's kind of what makes the song as charming as it is. It's got kind of an old school girl group feel to it, like something by the Ronettes or the Crystals, but more playful and winky and more vocally powerful by several orders of magnitude. Mariah always sounded like she flat out loved to sing and could do it better than anyone else. And I think it's that unbridled sense of joy and innocence that makes the song endure. So sure, it gets to be the one Christmas song of the 90s that people remember. If you're Mariah, you can get away with casually tossing off an immortal classic and having what is basically a footnote to your career absolutely demolish the competition. Oh, yeah. I Ah, boys to men, they'll make love to you, Christmas style. It's not a real 90s list if it doesn't have any boys men on it somewhere. Christmas Interpretations is actually their sophomore album, coming out in 1993 following their breakthrough debut, Cooley High Harmony. This song is written by Wanya Morris, one of the founding members of the group, and I've included it here not because it's good, but because it is amazing. Basically, it's just a list of depressing Christmas-related and non-Christmas-related stuff. And when it's juxtaposed with the beautiful voices of the members of Boys to Men, it just creates this weird, off-putting feeling. Unlike some of the other songs in this list, I actually understand why this one has not become a holiday classic. It's called Why Christmas? And I don't think they even attempt to answer that age-old question. Go listen to it. I can't do it justice here. Oh, when I was a kid, oh, how magic it seemed. Did you know that Pearl Jam had a Christmas song? I mean, I knew because I'm a fan of theirs. 
but I imagine most people outside of their base weren't aware of this. If one of the most iconic group of the 90s can't create a holiday standard, possibly no one ever can. But then maybe they weren't trying to. This was released as a fan club exclusive single in 1991, which was before Pearl Jam really cemented their status as the second biggest rock band of the 90s. I like the song. It aims for the more melancholy side of wintry bleakness and doesn't amount to much in the way of a chorus, but I find it pleasant enough. The build-up almost brings it to the sense of grandiosity that Pearl Jam at their best are infamous for, but I feel like it falls just short. Apparently they still perform this song live quite a lot, so I guess it works as a bonus holiday treat for the fans. The moment is right. 98 Degrees were the solid bronze medal winners of the 90s boy band Half Marathon. If Backstreet and NSYNC were the Beatles and the Stones, 98 Degrees were like the Who or the Kinks. Never the biggest, but always right up there. Right at the respectable enough level of fame. They actually have more of a claim to legitimacy than a lot of the knockoff groups that came later, since they just happen to be a bunch of friends and a couple of brothers who knew each other and got their start organically before boy bands were the hottest thing on the planet. This is pretty obvious if you ever looked at them. Nick Lachey is this square-jawed hunk carved from pure granite, but the rest of the group are just these aggressively normal-looking dudes. So they at least had a little more R&B credit than most of the white boy bandwagon. I'm pretty sure they picked the song as the first single off their 1998 album This Christmas because the chorus sounds a lot like their first hit Invisible Man. Honestly, I should put the instant Christmas song here instead, but they always bothered me for some reason. Justin sounded kind of whiny to me back then. Just hear those sleigh bells jingling, ring ting tingling too. Okay, I've been trying to avoid covers and focus mostly on original songs, but come on. This is TLC. As far as the 90s went, there is none higher. How many other female R&B groups can the majority of people name every member of? This is from 1992, and it goes in for something from that time. I guess this is on the Home Alone 2 soundtrack. It really shows their uniqueness, especially t boss singing in Left Eye's rap verse. They take this over-familiar tune and really make it their own. The production on this track is done by Pebbles and Organized Noise, the latter of which would go on to produce a bunch of stuff for Outkast. Out of all the forgotten songs on this list, I think this one deserves to be remembered the most. And I'm not sure why it's not. I guess there are just so many versions of this song that it's easy to forget there's a 90s hip-hop remix of it as well. Like, if you cry every time. Don't even front about Home Alone if you're a real 90s kid. This movie was childhood itself for us. It was as big as Harry Potter or Star Wars, which I know sounds like an exaggeration, but I swear it's basically true. Part of it was how it really captured the essence of Christmas and all its chaotic messiness and sadistic mayhem, but it also managed to ground its story in genuine holiday-adjacent emotion, thanks to solid performances from Catherine O'Hara, Macaulay Culkin, and Roberts Blossom, as well as a score from John Williams, back when he could still outcompose just about anybody on the planet. I'd contend he lost his touch somewhere during the Star Wars prequels, but this, for my money, is the most memorable theme he wrote in the 90s. The only real competition is Jurassic Park, which, as much as I like that one, just doesn't destroy me emotionally like this one does. It was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Original Song, but lost to a Stephen Sondheim pen song from Dick Tracy. Well, I'm not even going to pretend I'm in any position to take anything away from Sondheim, that just doesn't sit right. It's all the ways that we show love that feel like Christmas. Released in 1992, The Muppets Christmas Carol is probably my favorite sincere version of the classic Charles Dickens tale, with songs by Paul Williams, who had previously written songs for the Muppet movie. This is more on the melancholy slash sentimental side of Christmas than the fun and whimsical side, but I don't mind it. Anyway, When Love Is Gone is probably a better song, but it doesn't really have a damn thing to do with Christmas, and it's mostly just depressing as hell, so God bless us everyone. We pick up an oversized sock and hang it like this on the wall. The Nightmare Before Christmas is a 1993 film not directed by Tim Burton, but more strongly associated with him than its actual director. I'm about to lose dozens of subscribers that I don't have, but I never really care for this movie. I should like it. Halloween is my favorite holiday, and Christmas is not far behind, but it just never clicked for me. And you know what? I blame the songs. They're written by Danny Elfman, who I'm pretty sure I like most of the time, but in this case, it just doesn't work for me. And I think it has to do with my overall issue with the movie. Halloween and Christmas just aren't compatible. Halloween is a fun, carefree holiday, while Christmas is comparatively stressful and despair-inducing. Similarly, Christmas music has a certain wintry, jingly sound to it, which just does not work with the Halloween spirit at all. As a result, most of these songs sound overly harsh and abrasive to me, which I'm not against on principle, but it's not a very Christmassy mood. Children's haunted house horror music doesn't exactly make you think of sugar plum stockings or reindeer 
bows. I kind of feel like this whole movie is just this awkward attempt to try and reconcile these two polar opposite aesthetics with mixed results, to be generous. Anyway, most people in my generation like this movie better than I do, so I'll leave it to them to explain the appeal. All I get out of this is about 25 plus years worth of Hot Topic merch. The night Santa went crazy. The night Chris Kringle went nuts. Weird Al is a hero to most, and he always meant something to me. Personally, I think he deserves to be known for his originals just as much as for his parodies, and I will not rest until this is the case. Al is one hell of a legit songwriter. This song is off of Al's 1996 album, Bad Hair Day, and is actually the closing track on the album. It tells a bittersweet, sentimental tale about jolly old Saint Nick blowing a gasket and going on a murderous kill rampage across the North Pole. Musically, it's basically a straight-up homage to the song Black Gold by Soul Asylum, with a little of Ozzy's Mama I'm Coming Home in there. And he tied up his helpers, and he held the elves hostage, and he ground up poor Rudolph into reindeer sausage! In fact, it's so similar to Black Gold that I wonder why Al didn't just make it a full-on parody. There is another Soul Asylum song parody on Bad Hair Day, Syndicated Incorporated, so I guess he didn't want to double dip there, but honestly, he should have just cut that one, because this song's a lot better. Of course, this wasn't Al's first foray into blood-soaked Christmas carnage. Arguably, his 1986 song, Christmas at Ground Zero, is his more well-known carol, but that one played on fears of apocalyptic nuclear anxiety, while The Night Santa Went Crazy is more of a mass shooter Unabomber scenario, which, if anything, makes it more uncomfortably relevant today than ever before. In fact, isn't it about time we got a new Christmas song from Al? Come on Al, I know you've got another one in you. It doesn't have to be nightmarishly violent this time, but that's not off the table or anything. What the world needs now is a new Weird Al Christmas song, and I will not rest until etc. It's Christmas Tom Petty was the real classicist workhorse of rock and roll. This song was released in 1992 on A Very Special Christmas 2, a benefit album for the Special Olympics. Tom's career was enjoying a resurgence around this time, following the enormously successful albums Full Moon Fever and Into the Great Wide Open, and he was just about to drop probably the best greatest hits album this world has ever seen the following year. So he's definitely in high spirits on this one. This song is good for the same reason most Tom Petty songs are good. It's just a fun, rollicking romp that reminds you why you ever liked rock music in the first place. Thanks, T-Pets. And that's all the Christmas songs of the 90s I feel like talking about. What's your favorite one? Did I miss any big ones? I honestly don't care. Happy holibrations and good times to all. I'll see you sometime in the future. Sometime in the ghost of Christmas future, even.